Good morning to you and it's a, a sunshiny day this morning, wonderful to be up and about and uh, I'm recording a little early this week uh, ahead of our Zoom meeting so um, uh, we're opening up for us today we're going to look at Acts 3, uh, 1 to 26 and just to give you a bit of background um, we're with the community of believers they've grown after Pentecost to uh, well good numbers 5,000 strong although we don't know if all of them were there but they found this pattern of being we discovered last week of um, eating together praying together uh, praising together uh, sharing in teaching the disciples the apostles teaching them about Jesus and um, they're out and about uh, looking after one another pooling their assets and the apostles who've who kind of um, stepped up as disciples of Jesus like any good rabbi's followers to to stand in his um, in his stead to do what he did and so uh, along with the teaching and praying and they also we find are beginning to heal people and um, uh, sometimes clearly past since the chapter two but they find themselves Peter and John we encounter at the temple and they enter by the what's known as beautiful gate and uh, it was well named um, it was one of the bigger gates into the temple, which would have been kind of football stadium size. Uh, it would have been a large door, like we're talking 50 foot high, um, ornate, gilded, quite likely, um, bejeweled. It would have been quite a, a sight to behold. And outside this gate, there's a, a lame man, and he's been brought by friends, family, um, and left outside this gate. And... Um, you know, you can imagine it would have been a prime place for begging. This is a place that the Jews would come three times a day to pray. And uh, at three in the afternoon, where this story takes place, the priests within the temple would have been sacrificing on behalf of the people. They would sacrifice uh, an, an animal, uh, some wheat, some oil. Uh, they would burn incense. They would blow trumpets and, and lead a time of singing and praise and the people who have, would have fallen prostrate in prayer receiving the forgiveness the atonement for for their sins um, and so this is part of the rhythm of jewish life um, and so these people were coming to seek god to to seek a holy way of being with god and and just imagine encountering this lame man and and they a lot of people at the time saw illness or, or such things as a, a curse of God or a, a something to do with that man's sins. And so they're going to be freed from sins and this man's sat here and they would have imagined, I think, at least stuck in the, uh, the wages of his sin. Um, and he clearly was a man in need. He wouldn't have been able to make a living, so he was dependent on begging and his poverty next to the beauty, his sinfulness next to the freedom from sin they saw he would have plucked at heartstrings it would although the way the, the man um, describes encountering Peter and John I think most people would have walked past him and tried not to catch his eye because he's surprised when Peter and John look straight at him uh, and they say to him look at us uh, and clearly the beggar was not used to lifting his eyes and looking at people maybe it would have been seen as challenging um, perhaps he would he would have received arms but he wouldn't have um, directly stared at people but he's invited to do so and um, clearly thought somebody was gonna dish him some cash <laughs> um, but James and John don't I'm uh, oh, sorry James on Peter and John don't and Peter says look I, we don't have silver and gold but what we do have we give you and he offers his right hand and there's a there's a whole thing about right hands and um, kind of if you look through your bibles you'll see that kind of hand the right hand is a hand of blessing it's a hand of strength it's authority it's sovereignty and so the right hand was a significant thing and he says get up and walk now we've really only encountered jesus doing this i mean the disciples were were healing, praying for people but this is Peter doing what Jesus did, wasn't it? Um, you wonder at what, what led him to make that bold call. And I can only believe that God, as he saw that beggar, God put into his mind, ask him to stand, tell him to walk. 
because Peter knows he's doing this in Jesus's power. He's not doing this in his own power. But interesting, he's doing it in Jesus' power and he calls upon Jesus' name when he makes this command. He's not calling on God, he's calling on Jesus. So in Jesus, Peter is finding the power of God. He's finding the ability to heal sins, if this is what's holding this man back, to heal infirmity, to heal this lameness, which has clearly been a long-term thing for this guy. And this guy just, just kind of... Uh, limp to his feet literally and, and hobble around and yes that's feeling a little bit better today he's he dances he he's jumping for joy he's he's praising God he he knows that this this prayer in the name of Jesus is what's what's healed him and clearly thousands of people in the temple see this man know this is the guy they've seen week by week day by day and they know that there was no way he could have done this without something amazing happening. And they, they come to James and John, uh, I keep saying James and John, <laughs> Peter and John, and um, they kind of, you know, the, the, the beggars spread the good news, if you like, and they're the ones who are explaining. And they come to them astonished, and they come, they come running. I love that. They come running in the place called Solomon's Colonnade. Now, remember, they're there to be, to be uh, to to meet with God, to be uh, free from their sin, and yet that they 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 know God's at work and in a powerful way in the colonnade, not in the holy of holies, but in the colonnade, and they come running to find out what it's all about. And Peter speaks to them as fellow Israelites. Um, he says, "This." is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, that kind of formulaic, this is your God, the God of our fathers, they're Jews as well, has glorified his servant, Jesus. What he's saying is, look, God is using this person, Jesus, and then says, look, this person, Jesus, that you handed over to be killed, this person who was the Messiah, who you rejected, this person you put to death, but was raised from the dead, and we witnessed it. He reminds them of their guilt, um, a, a tough thing to hear maybe that look at this wonderful person who came and look at what you did and there would have been those there in line the streets who felt that guilt and realized that uh, what they'd done perhaps at this point he says by faith this man has been made strong it's in Jesus' name through faith in Jesus that he's been healed and you can see that he says to them, look, you, you acted in ignorance in doing what you did to Jesus Christ. But he was the person foretold by the prophets. He was the Messiah. And he brings the promises of God that you've been promised. In Jesus, your sins may be wiped out. They've gone for the, for the, to the temple for their sins to be atoned for, to be kind of, for, for God to turn a blind eye to them, maybe. He's saying a little bit more here. Your sins will be wiped out. And times of refreshing will come from the Lord. He, he promises that there will be um, a time when God will restore everything through Jesus Christ. That the fulfilling of the promises made to Moses of a, a blessing for all people would be fulfilled through Jesus. And they have a choice. They can be in or they can be out. They can look to Jesus, be followers of Jesus uh, speed this into being or miss out this this is a, a kind of amazing promise and you know they where they're at they're sinners and the only people who can free them are the priests doing these rituals and they have to come day by day or week by week for that freedom to have sins wiped out is is true freedom they're living under oppression they're living under roman rule they're living in, excuse me, pretty hard times. Jesus is promising freedom, restoration, refreshing. And it made me reflect on, on where we're at, where we are at. We've perhaps not had the best relationship with God ourselves, even those of us who follow Jesus, then we, we know full well that we, we don't always do what Jesus would want us to do. Um, sometimes that's through, through ignorance. I'm not sure if I would always catch the eye of a beggar like Peter and John did. Sometimes it's just through our weakness. 
sometimes we get distracted by life or we're led by other things. The other thing is we live in a society where things weigh heavily upon us. We still have the burden of COVID weighing upon us and the fear that that brings and the restrictions in life that that brings. But we forget if that was lifted from us today, we still have the uncertainty of Brexit and what that will bring. We have a reality of a financial, financially difficult future ahead of us because of the cost of what we've just been through. And we, all, we may know individuals who've lost their jobs or are in fear of losing their jobs. Maybe we're struggling financially already. We, um, we have global warming um, that sits ahead of us. And we know if we don't change things radically that, that our future or the future of our grandkids um, could be quite a difficult one. And so in a way we, we live under our own oppression and there will be those of you who live under even other things that, that I haven't named there that, that are local to you, that are part of your world, that you are you're weighed down by. It could be all manner of things. It could be your own health. Um, you could be like that lame man trapped and, and you have people helping you get by but you don't feel liberated and free. Um, and to be restored and refreshed would be a wonderful thing. Jesus is saying this is, this is about God's promise being unveiled. I promise to wipe sins. I promise to refresh and restore when I come again. And although we might have to live in the now and the not yet in terms of that, that ultimate refreshing and ultimate fullness of life is not yet here, we can get a foretaste as that lame man did on that day of being free in Christ. That may mean many things. It may mean the, the ability to have peace within this burdened world we live in. It might be freedom from, from illness. It might be uh, freedom in, in terms of other things. It may not be entire freedom right at this moment. The, the, um, the lame man, I always think he's got to find a job, hasn't he now? He's got to find another way of making his living. He's not free from all that, but, but we can be free in many ways. Wouldn't we want that? And wouldn't we want to hear the promise that, that, Jesus, that Peter and John, through Jesus, make to those people listening then, that you will be blessed so you can be a blessing? One of the wonderful things about COVID is we've saw, some of us have been able to use our blessings to bless others. We've been able to find ways to help others. We've been able to help people be liberated from some of the things that have held them back. Wouldn't it be great? if we could do that each and every day. In Jesus, we, we begin that process. We find a route to that way of life. We learn to be blessed so that we can bless others. I pray you might look to Jesus, that God might glorify in your life, Jesus Christ, that you, he might show the world his love, his peace, his liberation, that we might be part of the ripples that began in that early church to spread throughout the world, knowing that one day everybody will know the love of God. I pray that for us today too. Amen. So let's pray. Lord Jesus, forgive us if we have done things that burden us, burden others, uh, keep us captive in our sin. Lord, we want to be in full relationship with you. We want to know liberation from our sin. We want to know a blessing. We want to know refreshing. We want, we want to be restored. We want to be the people we, we were made to be, and not just for us as individuals, but for our community and our world. We want the kingdom to come, and we want all to be well. Lord, bless us today. Help us to reach to you to take your right hand, to be lifted out of our burden, our, our sin, our illness, whatever it is that holds us back, and be lifted into a place of praise and joy and the fullness of your kingdom. Would we be open to that today? We know you are ready. I pray we would take your hand in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for listening. Um, I hope you might join us for a Zoom one Sunday morning to uh, unpack the scripture together because there's always insights 
that come when we share together in, uh, in unlocking the Bible together and reflecting together and we sing a bit and we pray together as well. So we have a bit of a foretaste of, of what that early church had that was such a wonderful journey with Jesus Christ. We meet every Sunday morning at 10.30. You find details on our website or our Facebook page. You are very welcome to join us. Likewise, we hope you'll tune into a few more of these um, um, YouTube clips and Facebook videos. And if you want to contact me personally uh, and chat through anything you've heard, then I'd love to hear from you. Just drop me a line. In the meantime, may God bless you so you can be a blessing to others. Cheerio. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward